Around 2018, Crunchyroll posted a trailer announcing their first original show, High Guardian Spice. Its goal was to produce a series that embraces diversity and introduce hand-drawn animation back into shows. Even before the series was released, there was a significant amount of controversy surrounding it, to the point where Crunchyroll disabled the comments and ratings on the original trailer. So what made this show so controversial and what went wrong? The perfect starting point is to start at the original trailer. How Crunchyroll marketed this series was very interesting. Not much of it was shown besides some concept art and a basic overview of the plot in the first trailer. Many people were having issues because they kept on mentioning that the show would be revolutionary, but never showed any of it. Trailers are supposed to help you gather a basic synopsis of what the movie or show is about. It doesn't necessarily leave a great first impression when these people tell you all this information with nothing to back it up. Especially when it comes to animation, it's more of a show, don't tell. It's a very unique medium where you can get away with a lot of things that you can't necessarily do with words or in live action. So it feels like a missed opportunity at this point. Another one of the major talking points is how they presented diversity in the show and with the crew. The crew that worked on the show was around 50% female. And a lot of the first trailer really discussed how they want to make a change in the industry. People at the time really nailed this point down, calling the show SJW propaganda, when I don't necessarily think this is a big deal. While I don't necessarily think this was the best tactic on showing the diversity within the crew, I think it's quite stupid to base your opinions about the show due to this, like many people did. I understand issues with portraying diversity in the trailer. It's true. I don't want that to be the central selling point for the show. In a way, it feels like they're being dishonest with you. Like, they only add this because it might be viewed as a selling point for an audience. The inclusion of people of different race, gender, sexuality should be present in many of these modern shows, and it shouldn't be used for brownie points. There's no problem with diversity. Just how the creators choose to portray it is the issue. While it seems that I'm overly critical of this first trailer, I do honestly believe that this show and the crew had good intentions. Just the first trailer was represented poorly. This would hurt them in the long run because this series would be looked at with a critical eye no matter what. Remember, first impressions are everything. Something we need to look at is the quite rocky development of this show. The series creator, Ray Rodriguez, originally pitched the show all the way back in 2013 to Fred O'Rear Studios. You may recognize this company from all their YouTube channels and their productions. Like many shows, at first the pitch was rejected, but Rodriguez still moved on. In between pitches, Rodriguez continued to develop his series via mini-comics and even an animation of the main character. It was also cool to see how the designs developed throughout the years. This project actually got a second chance when pitched to Crunchyroll, and it was approved. Then it started production around 2017. You gotta admit that this show had a lot to live up to since it was the first one to represent Crunchyroll's original series. As mentioned before, the show was due to come out in 2019, but actually got delayed for two years. According to Rodriguez, the show finished production on November 7th, 2019. When I was researching, I couldn't find a clear reason why the show was delayed in the first place. At first, I believed it was due to the ongoing pandemic, 
but considering how lockdowns occurred in March, it didn't make much sense to me. But that still could be a reason. But there's another thing that we will talk about later on this video. Ever since the first trailer, marketing for the show was absolutely sparse, which really tends to kill a lot of shows and movies. I'm not sure if Crunchyroll decided highly advertising the show might be a risk after all the poor reception, or it might have been due to unknown causes. Once the show was postponed, it fell back into obscurity till 2021, where Crunchyroll announced its new release date in October of the same year. We finally got a narrow trailer in August, which fixed a lot of the initial complaints in the first one. We finally get to see our main cast, the art, and the animation, and a little bit of the story. People still didn't like it. Viewing the second trailer gave me a lot of Steven Universe mixed with a tad bit of she a touch of Little Witch Academia, with some My Little Pony sprinkled in there. The show to me came off as being really childish, and it promoted that whole friendship can solve everything motif that was just so beaten to death. One thing I did take away from this trailer is the confusion of why this was on Crunchyroll. I understand with creating a show Pitching a show and getting it approved is quite hard, so I guess I can't blame them for necessarily just jumping on the first offer they got. But honestly, I really think this show would have been more successful on Disney Plus or Netflix. Even though they were kind of advertising this as an anime, I really think that was more of an afterthought. With that, I leave a question. Do you think this show would have been more successful on a different platform instead of aiming to be something that it couldn't necessarily live up to? Following the second trailer, the show was finally released on October 26, 2021. So what was the initial reaction to the show? A. Surprisingly positive feedback, leaving many people surprised. B quite mixed feedback, or C, an absolute shit show. If you answered C, you're correct, but if you chose B, you're not technically wrong. This show was just very unoriginal and didn't present anything new to this already overcluttered fantasy genre like the crew said it would. It just seemed really rushed and unable to get its footing. The best thing to do is break down the show into sections and go from there. First, let's start with the most crucial part of these shows, the animation. The animation in the show is pretty standard. I think shows like she and Steven Universe have really set the standard for animated shows like this. Considering that we're dealing with this action-packed fantasy world, it lacks a lot of flavor. I really would like to see some more exaggerated animation and perspective to, you know, spice things up a little. <laughs> Many shows now tend to hold back when it comes to these features. I believe that this could honestly be something that could set them apart. Since we know that the production had some issues and I'm unsure what the budget was like, I kind of understand doing this might have been troubling. I guess what I'm saying is that I would really like to see more experimentation in this genre. Coinciding with the animation is this show's art style. I personally can't tell if I like it or not. I've noticed many western shows are slowly stepping away from that cow art style that was going on a few years ago. and kind of experimenting a bit more. I've definitely been seeing a lot more uh, inspiration coming from anime, considering its rapid popularity in the States. I always felt that it looked off to me. Don't get me wrong, 
I prefer it way better than the jelly bean shaped heads. But honestly, I don't know. Controversial opinion. With the rise of these shows inspired by Japanese animation, a majority of them aren't really reflecting on some of the more unique parts of anime. When it comes to anime, I tend to feel like a lot of the art styles can blend together. Not necessarily all of them. But one of the main things that stick out are these crazy action sequences, and it's something I feel that a lot more shows can benefit from. On the other side, Western animation's strength is having this more unique art style. Incorporating these two strengths together could be fantastic. There's definitely been shows to utilize these features, and it's what makes them more memorable. The series that come to mind is the original Teen Titans and Avatar. Even though they were still heavily inspired by the art style, the animation was incredible, making a lot of childhood memories. This is something we need more of. Character design is what represents the characters that we follow. When it comes to animation, you somehow need to create a unique character design that is also simple. You may have noticed in the background I've been kind of coming up with new designs for these characters, just as some visuals in between. This is more of something fun for me to do and keep you guys entertained, unlike trying to actually fix these characters. Hopefully that makes sense. In general, I really don't mind the designs in the show. I mean, they are simple enough when it comes to animation, but then again, I don't think they stick out enough to be memorable. In the main cast, it follows the trope of each girl being represented by a color. I don't believe that this is the best thing to rely on since other shows beat in this trope to death. I mean, look at our main character. Her color is pink. Why are so many magical girl characters pink? In this case, I would like to see these designs touch on more of the classes side that these girls are a part of. The main character Rosemary wants to be a warrior like her mother, but doesn't necessarily wear appropriate clothing for that part. She can have some more armor going on or something. One of the designs that actually really upsets me is Rosemary's friend Sage. Her design is so basic when it comes to a witch-like character. Funny enough, this was actually touched upon in one of the episodes. Since she tends to focus on older magic, she tends to dress like a traditional witch character. But come on, you can still have a traditional witch design and make it memorable. When the show first came out, there was a lot of clips circulating Twitter about the voice acting. Personally, I have no experience in voice acting, but I feel like you can tell things are totally off by listening to the audio. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, it's okay, Slime Boy, right? You were there when I got this thing. Oh, oh yeah. I hope, I hope it's treating you well. Um, anyway, sorry. I, I just came in here to cry, but I- The voice cast shares a lot of similarities. It's either that you have these actors who have some experience of voice acting being cast previously in minor roles, or this is their first ever role credited to them. Voice acting is a massive part of your immersion in the show by portraying what the characters are like. And if it's terrible, it will be very unbearable. I don't know what the casting situation is on this show, considering this whole shit show of a production. Still, I kind of expected some more quality control because, you know, Crunchyroll was still involved. But I've kind of learned at this point that I shouldn't get my hopes up. Now it's time to discuss the plot. It's just as mediocre as everything else in this show. This series falls into that category of coming of age, 
which isn't a bad category at all. Our character is Rosemary and Sage attend High Guardian Academy to develop different skills. As said before, Rosemary wants to be a guardian like her mother, and Sage wants to learn how to do new magic. On their way, they meet Parsley, who is a blacksmith, and Time, who studies archery. They eventually form this little group called High Guardian Spice. Because, get it? They're all named after spices, and they go to High Guardian Academy, get it? Real clever, huh? The series is definitely character focused and it pretty much shows them exploring this magical world where they meet all sorts of people and face many different mysteries and challenges. It doesn't really present anything new to this whole fancy magical girl genre that we haven't seen before. And that's why many people are trying to find reasons why the show exists. After all, didn't the shoe say that this show would be something that no one has ever seen before? And funny enough, that's where the show falls short. It follows too many tropes and at the end of the day, that just makes it too unbearable to watch. This show faced a lot of challenges that it couldn't overcome. While it did have the potential with the characters and even the story, it falls short due to production issues and marketing. Due to its current rating, I'm not sure if we will ever see the show get a second season where these issues would be improved upon. Hey, I'm just trying to be optimistic at this point. I wasn't originally going to include this in this video, but as doing research, I stumbled upon this article talking about this disaster that was Crunchyroll Originals, which brings a whole new narrative to the situation. Crunchyroll's goal for the new Originals program was to start production in Japan and outside of it. By focusing on show production, Crunchyroll set up various studios to start producing anime content within the states and other places. The studio that helped make Guardian Spice was called Elation Studios. Like what was said in the original trailer, this studio was based on diversity in both the workplace and the content that they produced. It was theorized that due to all the backlash that the show received, Crunchyroll was pretty much trying to drop their losses and move on. This would be a common theme with this venture. When Rodriguez was questioned about this via his Twitter, his response nodded to this theory. As mentioned, this project wasn't only established in the US, but there was also a Tokyo branch that faced similar issues that Elation did. Crunchyroll was a bit ambitious with this project, and due to lack of communication, they ended up shooting themselves in the foot and then screwing all these other studios over. So while it might not entirely be Crunchyroll's fault, I believe a good portion of the criticism should fall on them. So what we learned today is that this whole project was just a complete disaster, and it was just due to poor marketing, lack of communication, and Crunchyroll being overambitious. Still, I wish Rodriguez and his crew the best of luck when it comes to this show. Hopefully they will have a better chance in the future to improve on these ideas. Anyways, that's all for this video. Let me know what you guys think of High Guardian Spice, and bye guys!